I have a massive problem. You see, I've spent the last year upgrading the end dimension from a boring old end island to this ultra intergalactic energy harvesting spaceship. And I even had a cool idea to make the inside of this ship a museum of everything. So I first trapped all 86 mobs in the game and then sort of just stopped. Cut 200 days later and well, this place is still... So today we're gonna fix this by recreating 68 different biomes, which include an entire custom ocean, the deep dark. Oh, oh, oh my gosh. And finally, the new 1.20 cherry blossom biome. So let's get started. And first, the inside of this atrocious place has gotta be decorated. Let's start with placing some concrete to outline these hallways. Oh yeah, that's a good start. Now I want to get some sea lanterns on the floor to make it feel more futuristic. And uh, yeah, we're all out of sea lanterns. Now let's use these on the floor. Then I want to put some glass on top. And okay, yeah, there's the first hallway done. What you think? I don't know why I asked that. It's not like I'm gonna get an answer. So then if we just copy this to the other four sides. I also went ahead and made this little water column here so we can just drop down and exit the ship or ride it upwards to get back in. And yeah, I mean, I'm pretty happy with it. What I'm not happy with though is this area. Let's go ahead and change that. Obviously I got the plan for all 68 biomes, but I have no clue where to build them. So first things first, we need to mark out the location for all of them. Oh gosh, this is going to be tricky. Five, three, four, this goes three, 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 and that's it. And that wasn't too bad. If that were true. Uh, what's next? Four, five, three, wait, no, dang it, I lost count. Is this the third one? Oh, no, wait, that's the second. Oh no, that means they're all wrong. Well, what counts is that I got it done eventually, right? Right? So now that we got the concrete outlines there, I want to come in and start placing where all the biomes are going to go. Super fast sign placing montage. Except these custom biomes, you're not going to get to see until later. So that's everything planned, and now I guess we got to start. Over here, it looks like it's the desert. Okay, perfect. So to a desert we go. Let's get started. Got to gather all the desert blocks. Hi, skeleton. Hi, skeleton. Oh my, oh my gosh. Why are there so many skeletons down here? Then I also want to get the blocks from this temple because they'll be useful later. Okay, don't hit the... Dang it. That was a big explosion. But what's funny is at the end of the year, I'm going to explode one TNT for every subscriber the channel has. So please subscribe. Cool, that should be everything we need. Now let's start building. I'd like all of this stone to be covered by the desert. So when you walk down here, you only see sand. Let's start placing it down. Then let's terraform the ground a little to make it feel less tubular. Also, what if we add a desert well? Well, yeah, that looks good. Sometimes desert biomes have floating sand. Gotta place some string and then sand. Perfect. And there we go. That is the first biome done. Now we have the void. Yes, I know. I am in the end dimension building the void. How pointless. But once we get this concrete in, it's gonna work. Cause I wanna get some of my nether stars and item frames, and then we're kinda gonna just dot these throughout the concrete. When I put my invisible item frames texture pack on, we got some stars. Oh yeah, that's a real flex. The third one we gotta do is the mushroom fields. First we need some mycelium. Then we need mushroom blocks and dirt. The mushroom fields are pretty plain. They usually just have a floor of like all mycelium. But hopefully when we add the walls, uh, actually, I don't like that. What if we instead make this place like a massive mushroom and like maybe for the walls, we do mushroom blocks instead? Shoot, that actually looks really good. Wait, wait, wait. What about adding some brown mushrooms on the walls? Okay, yeah, that's nice, that's nice. Uh, then maybe on the ground we could do like two tall, like maybe three by three of these. I wanted to add some smaller like red mushrooms. Then how about for the roof we do some more of those red mushrooms? 
Finally, we can put some red glazed terracotta in the ceiling to give a little detail. These first three biomes are nothing compared to what I want to do next. I want to make every ocean biome in the game, and from the research I did, there are 10. Now, I will say I actually streamed one of these biomes to get a good feel for it, and let's just say... I'm going to scrap the design of having each ocean separated, and instead we're going to have them all connected into one massive water tunnel. But to build this water tunnel the best way possible, we're going to need to go on a little day trip. The place we're going is about two and a half hours away, so it's going to be a little bit of a drive. We are here. Are you ready for the grand reveal? The San Antonio Aquarium. Oh, there it is. So this is what we're gonna be making in the Minecraft world. Looking at this, we obviously got the glass, then there's like the outside water and fish, but then we have more subtle things like this coral as well as this cool underwater structure. Now, why did I have to come all the way out here for one shot? So let's just start with placing the glass in for the tunnel. And then finally, we're gonna block off this whole wall with glass. Before we flood the place with water, I gotta terraform all of this place. Oh goodness. Ah, that's right. I can't just use gravel or sand for the walls because it's just gonna fall. But I think sandstone and andesite could work fine as replacements. I bet the quarry from the last episode. Do you think we have enough andesite? Do you think we have enough andesite? That took four hours, bruh. But it's all gonna be worth it because now we gotta flood this whole room with water. Now, what's the best way to do this? Honestly, ice is an option. The only problem is I think when you break it, yeah, it doesn't turn into water. Uh, but that's not a big deal, because I guess what we could do is just melt the ice using something like campfires. Okay, yeah, yeah, so let's then go to the ice farm and get a ton of this stuff. And then we're gonna place this on the bottom of every single block in here. I think the, yes, the barrel dude, uh, the fisher, that's, that's right. He sells campfires, so we're gonna buy a bunch of these. Then let's just start by placing them all under the ice. At this point, it's actually starting to get hard to breathe down here. So let's get a conduit to fix that. Ah, that's better. And there, this whole room has been flooded. It's kind of crazy that I'm still in the end dimension. Now that we got all the water, let's make these actually feel like separate biomes. And first we got the cold ocean biome. I'm gonna have to play some kelp and seagrass, maybe also a drowned monument of sorts. Next we have the frozen ocean, gotta get some ice. Yes, I love when the storage just has every item I need without me having to craft anything. Then let's place this ice like... That's like an ice spike thingy. Uh, yeah, it works. And on the floor, we're actually not gonna be doing any seagrass or kelp, because the frozen oceans don't seem to have any. Next, we're gonna be doing the lukewarm ocean. Deep ocean. Uh, how is the deep frozen ocean any different than the frozen ocean? So I went ahead and also finished up the deep warm ocean, normal ocean, deep cold ocean, and the deep lukewarm ocean biomes. So that should be all the basic parts finished. But now I want to make this place feel more full by adding some of the underwater structures you'd normally find. And in these chests, we'll put a buried treasure, some diamonds, and a single enchanted golden apple. Great, and one last thing we need are fish. So, we got two empty shulkers here. I'd say let's just fill all these buckets up with different tropical fish. And voila, you fishes are about to go on a journey to the nether and the end. 
there you all go. Dang, these look really good. I can't wait to see the end result once every biome in this entire ring is done. So next, we're going to do all of the end biomes, and that's going to require a lot of black concrete. Hopefully this is enough. Anyways, because these biomes are pretty simple, let's just place this concrete and make a full ring. That's the first one done. Now we have to do this four more times. All right, that's good. So now that we have the void placed in, I want to start with the end biome in the end biome. That's worse than when I built the void. Uh, we're going to need a lot of end stone. Uh, that's not going to be anywhere near enough. Which means I'm going to have to set up a beacon out here and then just mine a bunch of end stone. This is like 45 minutes of my life in two boxes, but that should definitely be enough to get started with building the islands. So this biome is supposed to be like a mini version of the main end island. Hopefully this looks okay. All right, before any of you flame me for how plain it is, let's get some obsidian and craft these end crystals so it looks like the actual end island. Oh yeah, I almost forgot to add more nether stars. Cool, that's the end. In the end completed. I'm gonna just stop saying that, it's not funny anymore. We still have four more end islands, but these are almost exactly the same, so... There's the end midlands. And highlands. Wait, how is this any different? These two biomes look exactly the same. And there we go, the end barrens and the small end islands are done. At least for the small end islands, it's somewhat different, because I wanted to make this floating rock here. Kind of cool. What I find funny is that we've completed 18 biomes now, but we still haven't done a single nether one. Let's change things up and get the materials for all five. Here we go. That's a piglin brute. Whatever I do, I cannot fall down there. Yo, oh no, no, no. I'm okay. Now we need to get some of these warped, 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 warped. I can't seem to say that. I also want to get some ores for the walls. What about some ancient debris? Nah, that'd take too long. There's no shot. I, I'm not gonna. Yeah, I got 31 pieces of ancient debris. TNT, here's fine. Ouch, ouch, ouch. Whoa. Anyways, I think that should be everything we need. Now we can start on the nether wastes biome with a simple outline. Kind of just terraform these walls to look a little better. Some ores. Yes, ancient debris for display. I added a lava waterfall from the roof as well, and then some glowstone around it. I kind of like the idea of the biomes almost like eating into this pathway. It just feels more immersive. Oh wait, the basalt deltas has one of those end portals there. Okay, I have a really cool idea for that, but first we need to make a bunch of basalt spikes. Also some magma and maybe some blackstone to add some detail here. Yeah, that floor is looking really nice. Now I also kind of want to add a nether fortress there in the wall to give it some more depth. What you think about that? Pretty fancy? Also wait, oh yes they do. So campfires emit smoke and what if I just put some of these under the lava to make it look more bubbly or something? I almost forgot about that gateway there. Let me just try something. So I changed the nether fortress out for a blaze spawner, and this gateway is the spawner. Why does this thing look so cool? This biome has probably got to be my favorite one, at least until we do the cherry blossom one. For the soul sand valley, we need an outline of soul sand, then some bones, ores, glowstone, and finally wither skeleton skulls. For the crimson forest, we need an outline of blocks, then ores, trees, and lots of lava waterfalls. Finally, the warped forest. Yes, cool. That seems pretty good for this one. Now we need to address why Endermen are spawning here. Stop writing that comment saying I'm in the end dimension, Endermen spawned here. I have a mob switch right here, right? Yeah, so basically back when I made this whole ship, I trapped 70 zombie villagers in here, which essentially tricks Minecraft into thinking it's peaceful mode, and it won't spawn any Endermen, as you can see.
Okay, it's broken. How did you two spawn? Oh, I see. Oh, that's bad. So these two zombie villagers somehow picked up items in their hands, and because of that, Minecraft can now spawn two Endermen, which isn't the worst deal, but if you know me, I'm like borderline OCD, and it's gotta be perfect. So to fix this, we have two options. One, I can bring two more zombie villagers here, which will be incredibly hard because it's in the middle of this entire end ship. The other option is to get those zombies to drop the items. And there's only one way I can think of to do that. We need to cure all of the zombies. So we're obviously going to need some golden apples and then a bunch of weakness potions. Is this going to be enough? Also, a bunch of hopper minecarts. We need these because as soon as the zombies turn into villagers, they drop their items. But if there's still other zombies in the pit, then they're going to pick up those items instantly. The cool thing about minecarts is look. Yes, these items get picked up through blocks. So I'm going to have to set up a bunch of these under the zombies. It would be horrible if I accidentally broke a block and they all fell down here. Now this grid should be good. Okay, now for the moment of truth. Time to cure all of these guys. Yeah, if I fell in there, that would be literal death. Let's not. Let's get all of these and I guess just chuck them all onto the zombies. Next, the golden apples. Now I just wait. Oh, there's the first one. Oh yeah, now the wave of them are getting cured. And that's the last one. This next part probably qualifies me as a sociopath, but let's reconvert all of them back into zombies. <laughs> there's the first one. Oh boy, it's spreading. So many. Oh my gosh. And poor fellow. Well, the question we all have, did it work? Yes, it did. We got the two stone blocks from them. Oh yeah, no more endermen. That is pretty nice. Sweet, now I can work in peace. I guess we can start on the mesa here. So, um, yeah. Why am I still here? I need to be collecting blocks. I'm gonna have to harvest like all of these blocks to make the mesa. It would not be a Wumba video without phantoms. Now let's just start with the floor. Then I kind of want to come in here and make the layered terracotta colors that you'd see in a mesa. Oh, what if we add a little mine shaft here? Then maybe bring some planks out. Then let's bring these fences upwards. And this sort of just needs to mold around the mine shaft. Let's also make this mine shaft feel more realistic. We need TNT. I just had a really bad idea. What if we trapped a charged creeper in there? Okay, but first we need an ender pearl. There it goes, pause. Okay, lower that. And then let's get back to the ship. All right, and now that we're out of the end, I can just raise that. We had to do that because when the charged creeper goes through the end portal and I also do, it's gonna explode. But when we go through now, the ender pearl should teleport me away from the creeper. Please, rain, thunder. If it always comes back, what happens if I throw it and fly away? Oh, I just avoided. Oh, 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 there it is. There it is. Oh my gosh. Yo, I got away. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, okay. I can't remember the last time I had this much fun in Minecraft. Oh yeah, it's raining. And thunder, finally. I had to wait like an hour for that thunderstorm. Oh yeah. I also name tagged all the creepers, Mr. Bean. All right, Mr. Bean, follow me carefully. And great, he's in the end. All right, this seems risky. Please. Yes, the ender pearl worked. Oh, yes, that is a relief. Mr. Creeper, are you there? Yes, you are. Okay, just follow me, bud. Okay, he's in the ship. Come on. Now, if this creeper explodes the TNT, I am so dead. Come on. Yes, yes. Block all this off. And yeah, dude, we got a charged crapper. <coughs> creeper. All right, next, let's build the eroded badlands. We still got a basic floor, but then this nice sky and also the eroded spikes with the terracottas. Next, we have the wooded badlands biome. I like that this little mountain sort of merges up there. And there we are. That biome makes the count up to 26. And while we're still doing these warm biomes, how about we get the three savannas out of the way? First of all, the savanna plateau. And the walls, 
trees, grass, and yeah, it's basic, but it works. The normal savanna and the windswept savanna, the pain I went through making that mountain. It's terrible. Um, no, that doesn't. Why can't this just look good? Well, it's done. That's what matters. And we can move on to the lush cave. So about the lush cave, we're not gonna build it yet. Because one of my Discord friends suggested that I should try to get a blue axolotl to make the video more interesting. And I'd like to put it in the lush cave. From the research I did, apparently the only way to get a blue axolotl is to breed two random colors of axolotls, and then there's a 1 in 1200 chance that the baby is blue. How hard can this be? So let's get some glass and stone, and I guess I just gotta find some axolotls. Oh yes, that wasn't too bad. We're gonna take all of this stuff over to the coral reef, and yeah, this place should be perfect because axolotls need tropical fish to breed, and tropical fish spawn here. Alright, let me just set up the axolotl enclosure. Here guys, you can go into the water. Let's go get some fish for them. I have a five minute timer on my iPad and every time that goes off, that alerts me when I need to breed the axolotls. And then when it's ticking, we can collect all the tropical fish. So if it's only one in 1200, then doesn't that mean that someone could technically get it on their first try? Maybe we'll get lucky. Well, no luck for day one. I bred about 400 axolotls according to the stats. Guys, it's the next day and I'm gonna just fill all of these shulkers up with fish and then start breeding them. Yeah, I didn't get it today. And I'm also officially unlucky because I didn't get it before 1200. Day three, time for 2000 fish. Oh my gosh, I wish I could say I was joking, but I've bred over 2,000 axolotls and still not gotten it. Day 4, day 5, day 6. Alright, this is it. I spent all day yesterday collecting all of these shulkers of tropical fish. If this still isn't enough, then I'm just gonna give up, because this is absurd. I've bred over 3,800 axolotls and still not gotten it. Wait, why are so many people saying there's blue? <gasps> And it only took 4,835 axolotls. For anyone wondering, the odds of my luck being that bad are about 1%. My goodness though, let's breed this axolotl. All right, 50-50 chance. Finally, now we just wait for five minutes and breed them again. I'm gonna call this one Rubens, this one Bob, and this one Jake Soli. I'm gonna take all these blue ones back to the other axolotl place. And yeah, actually, Now blue ones go in the water. And now let's just get some of these tropical fish and start breeding them up some more. I have about 1500 axolotls in this pit now. Real question, do you think this is enough or should we try to get more someday? My game is really, really laggy. I need to get out of here. Wait, what? How did all of these biomes get made? I did not do this. Just kidding. When I was breeding the axolotls, I got bored quite often, so whenever I took a break, I came over here and built a few biomes. We can now check off the birch, dark, flower, taiga, big taiga, bigger taiga, snowy taiga, windswept, and normal forest biomes. Oh wait, I almost forgot the old growth birch forest. Mojang, one question, why? Why does this biome exist? I also finished the jungle, bamboo jungle, and the sparse jungle, the ice spikes, the mushroom field shore, stony shore, snowy plains, snowy beach, frozen river, and the unfrozen river. That's just a normal river. Then the windswept gravelly hills, the grove, meadow, the swamp, plains, sunflower plains, and finally, all four mountain biomes. <gasps> I almost passed out saying all of that, but I believe that brings the total up to 61 biomes finished. We just have a few of the fun ones left, then the deep dark, which I really don't want to do, and finally our three custom biomes to finish up the entire project. So first up, I want to fill in this area with the mangrove biome, which I do not have any of the blocks for. Let's get some of these shulkers and go to the mangrove to get some items. All right, yeah, that should be good. Now I want to start by placing this mud in to surround the entire room. Now we got to remove this pathway temporarily so we can grow a tree. Let's grow two. 
Maybe we can have like a little pool down here, some lily pads, and up there, because it's so plain, how about we add some leaves or something? Yeah, cover up everything ugly with leaves and it'll be good. All right, yeah, that's great for the mangrove. Next, we have the deep dark. I'm kind of afraid of the warden. Let's just say I haven't had the best of times with him in the past. Last episode, when we made the quarry, a few times it actually ran through ancient cities. Let's just quietly mine these. Oh no. There it is. No, that's the second time. How about we purposely spawn the warden up here so we can reset the three shrieks? That is always the most terrifying thing. Okay, we should be safe up here. Oh boy, the uh, warden's hiding back there. All right, here, let's go over to this. We'll swap that out. All right. Nice, all right, we got a good spot here. Yo, oh wait, here there is. Oh, oh, oh my gosh. Yo, yo, where is he? Where is he? He's up there. He's up there. He's up there. Oh, oh, oh my gosh. Run, 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 run. Oh, this is bad. This is really, really bad. Where is he? Where is he? Oh, oh my gosh. Go, 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 go. Oh boy, oh boy, oh my gosh. Yo, yo, yo. Elytra, Elytra. Oh my gosh. Yes, come on, come on. I'm shaking, I'm shaking here. Fireworks, fireworks. Oh my gosh. I, I was so close to dying there. Here, let's get extra totems. Do you really think I'd be that careless on my real world? That is what my imagination thought would happen, and what really happened was something more like this. Whoa, okay, okay. Leave, leave, leave. There we go. All right, let me just get the rest of the materials we needed. Anyways, now we can build this. I wanna start by placing the skulk around the whole area. Then we can kind of spam these things around. Also, I want to make a little ancient city thingy here. And great, that is the deep dark biome finished. Only five more biomes, then we're done. Right here, we're going to do the dripstone caves. For this one, we're going to make it feel just like a cave with lots of stone, ores, spikes, and then a waterfall that goes right through the pathway. For the lush cave, I want to put the axolotls we got from earlier in here. Yeah, that's nice. Right over here, we can put our two blue axolotls. Ooh, I got an idea. This one, Jake Soli, can go in the Avatar Islands. You get the reference, right? Anyways, I think that should be good for the Lush Cave. And that also means we've completed every single biome Minecraft has, but we still have three more spots to fill in, and these are gonna be for the custom biomes. The first custom biome we're gonna make is the Geode. Geodes usually have a lot of smooth basalt, which we seem to have a lot of, then some calcite, and of course, the amethyst blocks. Great, that should be it. Right here, we're gonna build the Wumba Classic, a pizza bio. Here's the cheese for the pizza. Next, we have to add like gooey cheese, then our pepperoni. I don't need to tell you what this is. Finally, let's just put the crust on our pizza, which finishes the bio. Ladies and gentlemen, we have one final biome. That is the new 1.20 cherry blossom biome. We're gonna start by using this wood to make almost like an archway. If you've ever seen photos of redwood trees that you can walk through or something, that's kind of what I want here. For the leaves, we're gonna use a bunch of pink blocks. The first of which is pink wool, which I don't have any of. So I guess we gotta go to the wool farm. All right, sheeps, give me your wool. Why did I dye these sheep white when I need pink wool? Anyways, now let's build the leaves. Those leaves look really good. Maybe also on the ground we add like a little water pool. And then I could put a pink axolotl in here so it matches the bio. Finally, we just need to add some flowers. And here it is, the final block. Thank you everyone for watching all the way through. I wanted to let you know that I just opened a brand new Patreon shop where you can get an early download of my hardcore world. If you'd like to check that out, I linked it in the description.